Lots to talk about now with my next two commentators. Rachel Wong, who's the CEO of Women's Forum Australia, joining me on the desk, and Sky News contributor Kosha Garda joining us from Melbourne. Thanks for joining us, guys. I want to talk about this interest rates, home ownership issue, um, because um, old people, boomers like me, who paid 17% interest rates and the like in the day, are out there telling younger people they've got nothing to worry about. There's a story today about a Kerry Boylet. She's 68 and she's been saying millennials want the latest phone, iPad, a nice car. They want to go on holidays and to restaurants and pay $20 or $30 for a drink. You've got to say, I'm prepared to keep my phone for four years. I'm prepared to cut back so they can pay their mortgage, obviously, Rachel. Do you think she has a point? <laughs> Look, I think as far as the sentiment is critiquing the consumeristic society we're in, I get where she's coming from. You know, I think we could definitely do with some work in that area. Um, but I think also given where Australians are at in terms of, you know, the post-COVID pandemic, the way that property prices have risen significantly since the 90s, um, you know, the foreign um, investment that's over here that's also affected that, I think maybe the comments could have been a bit misplaced or insensitive. Yeah, I tell you what, though, I'm old enough to remember that those, uh, those days of 17% interest rates and more, and it was tough. Uh, and there's got to be a bit of give and take here. But, Kosha, this reminds me of a few years back... Bernard Salt, a fellow Melbourneian demographer, writes for The Australian. He talked about people going up and having smashed avocado for breakfast, expensive breakfast, instead of socking away their money on their mortgage. It's, is, is there sort of a, a generational war going on here? I think it is a generational war, Chris. Uh, and I've he heard this from uh, a lot of members of the boomer generation uh, often. Not you, but I have heard it. And I think, you know, both things can simultaneously be true. Yes, there's a, a little bit of um, that lifestyle issue that it's fun to poke at millennials and they do have... Uh, elevated taste in terms of how much they spend on, you know, the small things. But it's a little bit of a, a penny-wise, pound-foolish argument because the structural advantages that previous generations had cannot be compared to the disadvantages that we have now. The biggest one is that um, the debt-to-income ratio, so the, the cost of a first-time home ownership relative to your household income, was about seven to, is, is about 7 to 9x today, and it was about 3x in her generation, in the boomers' generation. So that's just like chalk and cheese completely. Also, the household income uh, increasingly requires two incomes. So that's another thing. If you factor that in, it's even worse. There's other advantages where capital gains taxes only came in in the late 80s. So that generation, you know, could enjoy capital gains without being taxed on it. Our generation has to be. So th there's a lot more to it. And unfortunately, I think that's the root cause here and not so much the, the lifestyle habits of millennials. Yeah. And also, while well, the numbers are lower because people have borrowed more, the percentage increase in their mortgage repayments, it's, 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 it's like doubled. And there's going to be a lot of people facing a lot of pain this year, uh, no doubt, we'll keep on that.